From the very start of Demon Slayer, it's made super clear that becoming a demon is one of the absolute worst things that can happen to anyone. Sure, you get crazy powers like strength, speed and healing, but you lose all your humanity. So when Rengoku turned down the chance to become a demon during the Mugen train arc, he basically showed that he'd rather die than lose himself. But what if things went differently? What if Rengoku decided to live on and kept fighting as a demon? Let's rewind. Akaza punches a hole through Rengoku's stomach and just like in the original, offers him the chance to become a demon again. With Tanjiro yelling in the background, Rengoku realizes he's done for. But this time, instead of accepting death, he hesitates. Maybe he's scared or just really determined to keep fighting against demons. So, he gives in and takes Akaza's offer. Akaza, grinning like a maniac, pumps him full of demon blood and the transformation begins. Just as this painful process starts, the sun begins to rise. In his final moments of clarity, Rengoku tells Tanjiro and the others he'll be back to fight alongside them one day. Akaza just laughs at this promise and drags Rengoku into the shadows of the forest, keeping him away from Muzan for now. A few days pass, and when Rengoku wakes up, he's a full-on demon. His body's changed, he's got spikes, horns, and flame-like patterns all over. The hunger hits immediately, and it's intense. Now this is where things could go in a few different directions. Demons usually lose their human memories after the transformation, so Rengoku could forget everything and just become another one of Muzan's soldiers. But some demons hold onto their memories, or they come back with time. Let's say Rengoku, being the strong-willed guy he is, manages to hang on to some of his humanity. But it's a struggle. The hunger is tearing him apart, and he refuses to eat anything Akaza brings him. Akaza, who thinks humans are weak, gets frustrated by Rengoku's resistance. The two of them start fighting, with Rengoku using a new sword made from his demon powers, Black Flames. Even though he's got all the usual demon abilities, like super strength and healing, Rengoku can't fully match Akaza's power. They fight night after night, with Rengoku barely holding onto his humanity refusing to give in to the hunger. Akaza warns him that Muzan will kill him if he ever tries to turn against the demons, and Rengoku knows he's trapped. There's no way out. He's about to step into the sunlight to end it all, but just as he's about to, Akaza tempts him with more food. This time, Rengoku breaks. He gives in, starts eating, and as he does, his human memories start to fade away. Now fully transformed, Rengoku is a demon, and the Demon Slayer cause is left to deal with the fallout. His betrayal shakes the group to its core. His father, in deep shame, probably ends up taking his own life. And the rest of the Slayers are left scrambling, knowing that one of their strongest fighters now works for their biggest enemy. Since Rengoku, our fiery flame Hashira, knows the location of the Demon Slayer Corps' secret base, naturally, this freaks out Kagaya Ubuyashiki, the leader of the Demon Slayers. The guy's got to be thinking, what if Muzan finds out where we are? This could be the end of everything. So he's probably going over a couple of options in his head. One idea is to pack everything up and find a new place for their headquarters. But that's a pretty big move. Especially since their current base is practically demon-proof already. It's designed to keep the demons at bay. So why go through all the trouble? However, there's still that nagging feeling. Rengoku is a demon now. And who knows what he might spill. So maybe it's better to stay and just beef up security. Meanwhile, within the Hashira, there's definitely going to be some tension over what to do about Rengoku. Sanemi, the Wind Hashira, who's always been a bit hot-headed, is probably ready to track Rengoku down and take him out. Giyu, the more stoic Water Hashira, might be leaning in the same direction. It's not just a question of Rengoku's betrayal, it's about how dangerous he's become now that he's a demon. But then we have Tanjiro, ever the compassionate soul. He's not one to give up on anyone, especially not someone like Rengoku, who was once a hero to him. Tanjiro might argue that Rengoku deserves a chance to be brought back to the good side, to be reminded of the man he once was. And then there's Giyome, the stone Hashira, who's wise and calm. He might agree with Tanjiro, suggesting they try talking to Rengoku first before making any rash decisions. In the middle of all this, Tanjiro's got another concern weighing heavy on his mind. Before everyone splits up to go on their next missions, he's going to ask Kagaya for permission to visit Lady Tamayo, the demon doctor who's working on a cure to turn demons back into humans. Tanjiro has been pinning a lot of hopes on this, not just for his sister Nezuko, but now for Rengoku too. Unfortunately, the medicine isn't ready yet, but that doesn't stop Tanjiro from vowing to keep sending her demon blood samples to help with her research. Now, 
With Rengoku fully turned into a demon, Akaza would take him straight to Muzan, and man, Muzan is not happy. Akaza made Rengoku a demon without his permission, which is a major no-no. Muzan's furious, and it wouldn't be surprising if he just wiped both of them out right then and there. He's the demon king after all, and he doesn't tolerate disobedience. But he holds back, recognizing that Rengoku could be useful in gathering information about the demon slayer core. So Muzan tries to read Rengoku's mind, but to his disappointment, Rengoku doesn't remember anything useful. Still, Muzan is on edge. He's mad, but he's not ready to destroy Rengoku just yet. Instead, he decides to keep him around, giving him the position of Lower Moon One, since that spot is up for grabs after the Mugen train incident. Rengoku, now a powerful demon, is sent out into the world. This is where things take a dark turn. Rengoku, no longer the noble flame Hashira, becomes a terror. He's hungry for power, and with his human guilt buried deep inside him, he begins to rampage through villages. Fast forward to the events of the Entertainment District arc. You know the one where Tanjiro and the gang team up with Tengen, the flashy sound Hashira, and his wives to take on Upper Moon's six demons, Daki and Gyutaro. This part of the story goes pretty much as it did in the original. Tanjiro, Zenitsu, Inosuke, and Tengen investigate the district, eventually discovering Daki's involvement. Epic battles follow, with Daki nearly being killed until her brother Gyutaro reveals himself. The fight gets intense. Daki's deadly cloth attacks and Gyutaro's poisonous blades push the demon slayers to their limits. Nezuko even awakens her next demon form, and after a fierce struggle, the demon slayers manage to win. But they're in rough shape. Tengen's poisoned and barely holding on, Inosuke is critically injured, and Tanjiro and Zenitsu are completely drained. And then, out of nowhere, Rengoku shows up. Demon Rengoku is much stronger now, even more powerful than Daki and Gyutaro. He sees this as his chance to prove himself and possibly rise in the ranks of the upper moons. Tanjiro, though barely standing, is in total shock. He recognizes Rengoku, but he's horrified by what his mentor has become. Still, true to his nature, Tanjiro tries to reach out to Rengoku, hoping to appeal to the man he once admired. But Rengoku, consumed by his new demonic power, hardly acknowledges him. Instead, he makes a beeline for Tengen, who's already in a world of pain. Things are about to get even more intense as Rengoku's black flames threaten to destroy everything in their path. Rengoku's up on a rooftop, looking down at Tengen, his flames flaring like crazy. You can tell there's some old memories and guilt bubbling up, but he pushes that all down. He's got his eyes on the prize now. Rengoku raises his fiery sword and swings it right at Tengen. Tanjiro jumps in, trying to block, but he gets thrown aside by the sheer power of the hit. Tengen's left wide open, and bam! The sword cuts right through him. With Tengen down, things are about to get wild. Like every other time Tanjiro fights a demon, his anger just boils over. He turns to face Rengoku, his heart breaking as he yells at his old friend to remember who he really is. Rengoku used to be the guy who protected everyone from demons, right? But now, as a demon himself, Rengoku barely flinches and just keeps moving toward Tanjiro. Zenitsu and Inosuke, even though they're totally wiped, jump in to back Tanjiro up. The three of them are no match for Rengoku though, especially after their last fight. Even Nezuko joins in, but she's exhausted too. Rengoku traps them all in black flames and he's about to finish them off when something shifts. The wind blows, the flames flicker, and suddenly Rengoku's gone. But he's not really gone, he's just moved. Sword clashes echo through the street, fire and wind mix in the chaos, and then it all stops. Giyu and Sanami are there, panting and bloody, standing between the young demon slayers and the demon Rengoku. They've been hunting him, and they finally caught up. Giyu tells the boys to run for it, but Sanemi's raging, his eyes locked on Tengen's body. He curses Rengoku, swearing that this is the end. Rengoku just smirks, flames flaring around him, and the fight kicks off again. Zenitsu's freaking out, asking if they should bail, but Tanjiro and Inosuke don't answer, they're too focused on the intense battle happening in front of them. We know from later in the story that Rengoku isn't quite on the level of the Upper Moon Demons yet, but he's way stronger than any Hashira they've faced before. Giyu and Sanemi manage to keep him occupied for now, but the sun's coming up and they just have to survive until then. The town's burning, people are screaming, and the two Hashira are trying to protect the civilians while fighting Rengoku. Rengoku, meanwhile, is loving the chaos. 
He's spreading flames, destroying everything. Tanjiro watches, torn apart inside. He knows he can't beat Rengoku right now, but he also can't stand by and watch his friends die. Deep down, he still believes there's a way to save Rengoku. Time's running out. Giyu gets engulfed in flames, and Sanami's attempt to save him gets him slashed across the leg. The two of them stumble, and Rengoku charges in for the kill. It's a losing battle for the Hashira. At his breaking point, Tanjiro digs deep, finding that next level of power. His sun-breathing technique fills him with energy. Giyu manages to cut Rengoku across the chest, but flames burst from the wound, and Rengoku grabs Giyu by the throat. Just when it seems like it's over, Tanjiro swoops in, cutting off Rengoku's hand and saving Giyu. Tanjiro's demon mark flares, giving him the strength to fight on. The three of them, Tanjiro, Giyu and Sanami, team up, hitting Rengoku with everything they've got. Tanjiro's shouting memories at him, trying to make him remember who he used to be, how he trained them, how he cared about them, how he was willing to die to protect them. But nothing's working. Tanjiro's slowing down, completely exhausted. Rengoku throws him aside like he's nothing, and that's where we'll have to see what happens next. Giyu and Sanemi are taken down fast. They're totally outmatched by this demon who just won't quit. With insane stamina and recovery, Rengoku's standing over them, ready to deal the final blow. But then, Tanjiro gets back up. His sword's gone, and he's barely breathing. But his sun-breathing technique flares up again. He locks eyes with the demon. Tanjiro does the only thing he can think of. He starts yelling Rengoku's name over and over. He's desperate, hoping it'll stir some memories, just like what happened with Nezuko. Tanjiro believes that deep down, the real Rengoku is still in there somewhere. With each shout, Rengoku's gaze starts to blur. The flaming sword lowers, and all of a sudden, tears start welling up in Rengoku's eyes. He whispers, Tanjiro. The flames flicker out. Sanami goes in for another strike, but Rengoku blocks him. Sanami, he says, then looks over at Giyu, calling his name too. And just like that, Rengoku drops his sword. He stares down at his hands, tears streaming down his face facing the demon slayers. Tanjiro's reached him. His memories are back, but so is the crushing guilt and shame he's been hiding all this time. Rengoku's back, but now what? The slayers could bring him back, but it's complicated. Like when Sanemi first met Nezuko. Some Hashira believe that once a demon kills a human, there's no going back. So, while Rengoku is drowning in his emotions, Sanemi goes for a killing blow, but Tanjiro steps in. He kneels in front of Rengoku, saying he still has a choice. He can still come back, but Rengoku's not convinced. He glances at Tengen's burned body, and the guilt hits him hard. He pleads with Sanami to end it. Sanami's more than ready. But then a chilling laugh echoes through the street. Muzan's here. Muzan had been biding his time, knowing that Rengoku might eventually regain his memories. And now, with those memories back, Muzan reads his mind and finally gets the secrets of the Demon Slayer core. Like where their base is, the Slayers exhausted and beaten, prepare to face Muzan. He claps for Rengoku, calling him useful and demands he join him, but Rengoku doesn't listen. Instead, he stands and tells everyone to run because the sun's coming up and Muzan can't stick around much longer. Muzan scowls and tries to activate the curse that would kill Rengoku, but it fails. Rengoku's memories are back, and with them, his humanity. He's no longer under Muzan's control. Now, Muzan's ridiculously strong, way beyond the upper moons, so it's possible he kills them all right here. But for the sake of the story, let's say the sun's just about up. Rengoku steps up to face Muzan and buys the others time to escape. Giyu and Sanami don't hesitate. They grab the others and run. Rengoku holds Muzan off, but he knows it's a losing battle. Muzan kills him, and the sun rises just in time for the others to make it back to the Demon Slayer core base safely. Even though they've just lost Rengoku and Tengen, there's no time to grieve. Now that Muzan knows their location, a massive all-out attack on the core is inevitable. Tanjiro and the others will have to dig deep, finding every last bit of strength to survive. But one thing's for sure, Tanjiro will never give up protecting his friends, even if it means unlocking his full potential or dying in the process. Thanks for sticking around. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.